uh, our focus so far has been on ADSL as the most dominating technology that comes from the DSL family. Uh, indeed, it is the most widely deployed. But at the same time, uh, because of certain unique uh, user requirements uh, coming from some end users, some corporations, and some enterprises, um, we need to uh, provide some kind of variation in the kind of asymmetry and uh, data rate provisioning if it can be done through DSL. We'll see how that is done. And then we'd look at a comparison table of these technologies. So DSL uh, is a complete suite or a family of technologies. The choice actually uh, depends on what the user exactly wants. Most of the users are quite comfortable with, with the provisioning of ADSL. Um, but sometimes uh, in certain applications, as uh, we uh, earlier mentioned, uh, voice over IP, Skype, interactive gaming, etc., uh, certain asymmetric, uh, certain symmetric services are then required. Uh, and then there is a very uh, unique requirement in terms of distance uh, uh, from the central office or exchange as well. You might have heard it from your service provider that in your neighborhood, uh, DSL technology, uh, ADSL as such, is not provided or cannot be provided because your neighborhood is a, a little far farther from the uh, exchange. Uh, so it means that if at all some uh, service has to be provided uh, for internet connectivity, then how longer distances can be achieved by bringing some kind of modification to the DSL. Here in this table, we'd have a look at the different DSL technologies in terms of uh, their data rate upstream and downstream, it is important. Of course, we look at these. Another important aspect is how much distance is allowed or is permissible from the central office. That is, uh, what is the maximum length of the local loop or the access side? Then the number of lines that can be configured or that are actually needed. Then does a certain variant of DSL coexist with the, the telephone network? Uh, usually, we, uh, I mean, if we just look at ADSL, we expect that uh, if ADSL can, then every variant of DSL should, but it may not necessarily be true. Now, let's look at each of these one by one. Let's start with the uh, ADSL, the one that we have amply covered. Uh, we have a downstream data rate of 8 megabits per second, upstream of 1. Compare this with the high bitrate DSL. High bitrate DSL may sound uh, high, but in terms of data rate, it is only limited to 1.54 megabits per second, which is the T1, the transmission one standard for US and Japan. But HDSL is, uh, if you might have already noticed, it is highly symmetric. The maximum length that it can cover is around uh, 3.65 kilometers, but it needs uh, two telephone lines to provide symmetry in real sense and it cannot exist simultaneously with the telephone line if the telephone calls are to be made. Then we have the uh, multi-rate symmetric DSL. It, it allows a choice to get multiple variable data rates that can be obtained uh, in a symmetric manner. The distance here can go very long. It's around uh, 8,800 meters. That's around 9 kilometers. Again, it cannot uh, share the line with the telephone call. Other interesting variants are the rate adaptive DSL. Here, the asymmetry is huge. You see we have seven megabits per second on the downstream and only one megabits per second on the upstream. Then we have uh, the symmetric DSL, the absolutely symmetric, and the very high data rate DSL, which is very impressive, you see. For shorter distance, if the local loop is limited to around only a kilometer, that is 1200 meters, up to 52 megabits per second on the downstream and 16 megabits per second on the upstream can be achieved while the telephone calls can also be successfully made. Now, it means that if you are fortunate enough to live in such close proximity to your central office or the exchange, uh, you can probably subscribe to VDSL as well.